Hello, the Dark Mystery 44 here. Today, I'm going to be showing you this RAM cell. So this RAM cell contains uh, five times for 20 bits, 20 bits of data this does. It's fairly compact, and you can make it more compact as well by taking out some of this redstone here. But pretty much, this is your uh, like data bus, and you're gonna put in your binary number in here. So say we put in a number five, and then it'll put five into all of these D flip flops which store it. But they won't actually output five because they're locked, aren't they? So to unlock them, you type in the right command or you put in the right command, which is just this lever, which you flick down and back up and it'll write five to the thing. But then you don't want the data all to come out at the same time or it may corrupt your, yeah, it'll corrupt your data. So then you have these, which are read lines, so you can read the specific data. So I read this one, I read this cell, which is zero. This cell is five, which I read, and it comes out as five. And this cell is zero again, which I read, and it comes out as zero. So this is very useful for CPUs and stuff that need a lot of RAM in a fairly small area, like, because this is already 20 bits of RAM. Like, you could make it smaller, of course, as well. There's probably better designs out there, like this one's quite a big design. But it's a fairly decent design. It uses D flip flops as I said, like this. I'll show you how to build them real quick. So to build a D flip flop, you're gonna wanna put a repeater here. Well you don't need to put this repeater here, it just is nice so you can see that it's not going in. So you can see that this is off. When it's off, this is off. But we're not going to use this repeater because it'll work without anyway. So you're going to have redstone down like this. This is your input. Then you're going to have a block, 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 block. We're going to put a redstone torch here so it feeds back into itself. A redstone torch here and here. Right, then we're going to put a block here, a redstone torch here. And this is your output, by the way. Then we're going to have redstone across here and a piece of redstone here. So as I was saying, uh, you actually need to put a repeater here, by the way. Oops, not like that. Whoops. You need to put a repeater here. And then, so, this is your control that will save it, and this is your input. So say we're going to put an input of one. You can put any inputs, right? So we want to input the number one. So we're going to turn this on to input one. Then to save it, we click this down, and even if this is off or on, it's still going to be one. Then when we want to reset it, we can we could also turn it off, input the number zero to it as well, see? And it won't turn it off. So now I'll show you a real-world example of what you would be using this for, because, yeah, to be fair, no one in their right mind who builds just random redstone is going to be using one of these. These are only for, like, specialised people who like dabbling in binary and stuff with adders and subtractors and stuff like you could link it up to one of these which I think this is a subtractor yes you could link it up to this to save your different outputs to the different uh, thing in the cell and show different outputs at once so you, this one yeah that's five so this is a you could link it up to a CPU over here to save your data actually this would be just a processing unit actually because you need a RAM and a ORU. So I will show you a project that I've been working on for around a week now. And I am very happy with it because yeah, it's been taking me a long time, but it's worth it. As you can see, this is a wrestling computer that I've been working on. It's just a small five bit computer. Well, I say small. It's a five bit computer that's not very compact and has eight different CPUs, or I call them CPUs, cores kind of, yeah, eight cores or like programs that you can load onto it. But what we're here for is the RAM. So as you can see, I have seven different RAM cells, as you can see. So, and this one's bugging out for some reason. I'm just gonna reset it all. So there and it's still bugging out for some reason. I don't actually know why that's a thing. There. All right, so pretty much you have 
yeah, your RAM cells. These are, this is the more compact design where you don't have too much space. You have just enough space for it to all work. There's probably even more compact design like out there somewhere. Uh, so this is the in, input bus and this is the output bus. So it comes out here, back into the CPU and ALU. Yeah, I know, ALU is massive and this, this is your input. And I do not know why this is on something to do with this which is only on because this is not signal strength enough what that's weird yeah I better not I better clear everything before I render it but yeah this is a example oh my god this is a good example of RAM in usage with a computer that I'm still working on, as you can see, haven't made the display drive yet. But I will use my binary to binary code to decimal display driver with a slight modification because it has an extra digit. So if you want to know how that works, check out my video. There may be a link in the description if I can be bothered. <laughs> yeah, so this is a great use of RAM cell, like of a RAM cell, and it's very simple too. So you have your input line, which is like this, which has redstone torches to bring it down to the next level. So one would be here and go down to the next level. And there'd be a one here, a one here to bring to the next cell. As you can see, these are five bits. Really don't ask why my computer's five bits, but I was originally gonna go with a four bit computer, but then, eh. Oh well, five bit computer works just as well. So yeah, you have your inputs here and it goes through, saves into the cell if you want it to save, save and reads the cell if you want it to read. So if two of these are reading at once, which actually isn't possible with this computer, then it'll corrupt the data and merge them together on this, which well, it'll order data actually. And that's not what you want. You do not want that unless you do want it. So it'll, yeah, it'll merge the data and you don't want that. So make sure you have a read line as well, because if you don't have your read line, the data will merge together. And so this is fairly compact, this RAM cell, and you can of course make it bigger and whatnot. So yeah, I hope you liked this video. And please like and subscribe, and wish me luck on finishing this computer. Yeah, thanks for watching, and I'm out.